We're live. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Storytime Live. I think they want my phone like this. What do you think? Would that be better? We're going to start in just a few minutes. So, I hope you're ready. I'm going to set this here while we get ready for the land of make-believe. We're back now. Hopefully you guys are ready to tune in for story time live and online. Today's story time will be about the land of make-believe. Make-believe, what does that mean? To use your imagination. Yeah, you can pretend things. You can pretend that your tripod will hold your phone the right way. That's good. All right, should we start with make-believe? Well, what does make-believe mean, anyway? What is make-believe? You could make-believe, you could pretend you're an astronaut. Three, two, one, blast off. You could make-believe that you are the king of Spain. I'm the king of Spain. You could make believe you're a rock star. I'm a rock star! And you could sing into a microphone. You could make believe you're the king of Spain who sings into a microphone. There's lots of things you could make believe. There's anything you could make believe. So that's what we're talking about today. So, I'm gonna make believe I'm a rock star with my ukulele and we'll get started. If you want to read a book, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you want to read a book, clap your hands. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. And let's see, let's just shout hooray. If you want to read a book, shout hooray. Hooray! If you want to read a book, shout hooray. Hooray! If you want to read a book, listen up and take a look. If you want to read a book, shout hooray. Hooray! All right, hooray! I do want to read a book about the land of make-believe. This book is called Harold and the Purple Crayon. And I'm gonna bring the phone down so you can see the book. And Harold, he's a little boy, and he makes believe with his purple crayon because he draws whatever he thinks he wants to imagine. He uses his imagination with drawing. So here we go. Look at this mess he drew with his purple crayon. One evening, after thinking it over for a time, Harold decided to go for a walk in the moonlight. There wasn't any moon, and Harold needed a moon for a walk in the moonlight. So he drew one, and he needed something to walk on. So he drew, he made a long straight path so he wouldn't get lost. 
and he set off on his walk, taking his big purple crayon with him. But he didn't seem to be getting anywhere on the long straight path. So he left the path for a shortcut across a field and the moon went with him. The shortcut led right to where Harold thought a forest ought to be. He didn't want to get lost in the woods, so he made a very small forest with just one tree in it. It turned out to be an apple tree because he drew apples. He made believe there were apples. The apples would be very tasty, Harold thought, when they got red. So he put a frightening dragon under the tree to guard the apples. Ooh, it was a terribly frightening dragon. It even frightened Harold. He backed away. And look at his little crayon, what's drawing? His hand holding the purple crayon shook. Suddenly, he realized what was happening, but by then, Harold was over his head in an ocean. Oh no, he imagined an ocean and fell in it. He came up thinking fast. What should he do? What should he draw? What would you draw if you were falling in an imaginary ocean and you had a magic purple crayon? Harold drew a boat, yeah. In no time, he was climbing aboard a trim little boat. He quickly set sail. And the moon sailed along with him. After he'd sailed long enough, Harold made land without much trouble. He stepped ashore on the beach, wondering where he was. Like he drew a little anchor. The sandy beach reminded Harold of picnics, and he thought of picnics made him hungry. So he laid out a nice, simple picnic lunch. There was nothing but pie. But there were all nine kinds of pie that Harold liked best. That's a good picnic, nine kinds of pie. When Harold finished his picnic, there was quite a lot left. He hated to see much, so much delicious pie go to waste, so he drew, hmm. Harold left a very hungry moose and a deserving porcupine to finish it up. And off he went, looking for a hill to climb to see where he was. Harold knew that the higher up he went, the farther he could see, so he decided to make the hill into a mountain. If he went high enough, he thought, he could see the window of his bedroom. He was tired and he felt he ought to be getting to bed. He hoped he could see his bedroom window from the top of the mountain. But as he looked down over the other side, he slipped. Oh no! And there wasn't an outer, another side of the mountain. He was falling in thin air. Oh no! So this is another problem for Harold. What would you do if you were falling off the side of a mountain but you had a magic purple crayon. <sighs> Luckily, he kept his wits and his purple crayon. He made a balloon and grabbed onto it. Good thinking, Harold. And he made a basket under the, big enough, the balloon big enough to stand in. He had a fine view from the balloon, but he couldn't see his window. He couldn't even see a house. So he made a house with windows. 
and he landed the balloon on the grass in the front yard. None of the windows was his window. He tried to think where his window ought to be. He's still drawing. He made some more windows. He made a big building full of windows. He made lots of big buildings full of windows. He made a whole city full of windows. But none of the windows was his window. He couldn't think where it might be. He decided to ask a policeman. The policeman pointed the way Harold was going anyway, but Harold thanked him. Thank you. And he walked along with the moon, wishing he was in his room and in bed. Then, suddenly, Harold remembered. He remembered where his bedroom window was. When there was a moon, the window was always right around the moon. And then Harold made his bed, and he got in his bed, and he drew up the covers. The purple crayon dropped on the floor, and Harold dropped off to sleep. The end. That was Harold and the Purple Crayon by Crockett Johnson. What did you think? Harold had a pretty good imagination. He imagined all sorts of things just with his crayon. There we go. So that's the land of make-believe for Harold. What else could you make believe? The next book I'm gonna read in a minute requires make-believe because it is just a silly story that could never really happen. You have to make believe just to pretend it would really happen. It is about some frogs, a whole bunch of frogs. But before we get to the book, I'm going to sing a song about five frogs. And you might know this song, but you probably don't know this new way for the song. So when you learn the new way, you can help me sing it too. Do you see five frogs behind me? All right. This song goes like this. Five green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog began to rise. It flew into the sky. Now there are four green speckled frogs. What? They flew? That's different. Bye-bye, speckled frog. Four green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog began to rise. It flew into the sky. Now there are four green speckled frogs. What? They flew? <gasps> Three green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog began to rise, it flew into the sky. Now there are two green speckled frogs. What? They flew? There's two frogs, one there, one there. Two green and speckled frogs sat on a speckled log, eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. One frog began to rise, it flew into the sky. Now there are one green speckled frog. What? They flew? There's just one guy left. One green and speckled frog sat on a speckled log eating some most delicious bugs. Yum, yum. It started to rise. It flew into the sky. Now there are no green speckled frogs. What? They flew? So that requires make-believe, doesn't it? Frogs don't really fly, but if you make-believe, frogs can fly. If you read this book called Tuesday by David Wisner, you have to believe frogs can fly.
What do you think? Can frogs fly? If you make believe? Yeah, if you make believe, frogs can fly. This book doesn't have very many words. I'm just going to show you the pictures and I'll, I'll talk a little bit. One night, the frogs were asleep. What? The lily pad went up in the air. The frogs were rising. Tuesday evening, around 8 o'clock. It's quiet in the swamp. There's a turtle. The turtle looked up. The frogs were rising into the sky. <gasps> you don't see that every day. They were flying. They were chasing the birds. At 11.21 p.m., this man is having a snack, but he thinks something is strange. Let's look out his window. <gasps> the frogs were flying through the clothesline. This one got a cape. They flew in the window. They flew in the fireplace. That lady was watching TV and fell asleep and she didn't even know that the frogs came in and watched TV. Then, at 4.38 a.m., flying to see, what's this? Woof, woof. Now, all the frogs started to fall off of the lily pads. They're going back down to the ground. They hopped down the road. They splashed in their pond. I wish I was flying. The next day, the police found the lily pads. The man was on the news, but nobody knew why there were lily pads all over the road. Somebody knew. The dog knew. Next Tuesday, 7.58 p.m., what will happen? Oh no, what is this shadow? What is that? You don't think it's true. Next Tuesday, what could fly? <gasps> that is silly. The end. So that book was a lot of fun. But you have to make believe, if you want to believe, 
the frogs can really fly. And we did, and that made it a good book. I hope you do a good job today and from now on making believe. Use your imagination and you can pretend that anything will happen. Well, that's the end of story time. We'll sing our last song. Are you ready? The time has come. Show me your thumb. Next thing to do, pointers out too. Middles extend as they unbend. Ring fingers next, stretch them out flexed. No time to wait, pinkies out straight. These are the plans. Give me high fives. That was a new ending. I hope you had a good time. I'll see you next Tuesday at Storytime Live. Please make sure to check out all the great library programs on our Facebook page, which is where you are now, and on our YouTube channel. We have something for children every single day. Bye-bye.